What is good? We're back. Uh, we were going to have a, a full new tripod, uh, but uh, our buddy Foreman is uh, without power. Uh, but we do have Big D making his first uh, appearance on the big show. What's up, Big D? How you doing, bud? What's going on, man? I've got lights, so I'm, <laughs> I'm in better position than some. So that's right. Doing good, man. That's right. All right. So today we are uh, we are going to do a one quarterback tight end premium rookie mock draft. We typically live in a super flex tight end premium, whether we're talking startups or rookie drafts. But I know that, you know, they're still didn't want to skip over not doing any of those this year. Uh, so we're going to hit a little one QB t tight end premium rookie mock that we did with uh, some patrons and some public people. We did a live draft on Patreon. So we're going to kind of review that that draft now. All right. So what are your what are your thoughts on on one quarterback? Uh, Big D. I've uh, as you just kind of talked about, man, I, I, I've shied away from it just because I'm, I'm into super flex and, and definitely tight end premium. I think this one is a tight end premium mock that we did, but I, I think it's a good entry, <laughs> you know, uh, and I know some people prefer it. So uh, there's there's no hate. I, you know, whatever you prefer is what you should play. That's it's right. this is about fun and and about winning, really. So um but for me, I feel like it's a really good entry for somebody who hasn't played Dynasty before um, that goes from a redraft or maybe even a keeper league and they want to do a Dynasty. You know, it kind of it kind of makes sense as that transition, I think, um, generally. And and then also just just to mix it up. Sometimes you like different things in your portfolio. You know, if you're talking stocks, sure. you add, add a little bit of everything. If you're talking uh, mocks, you add a little bit of everything. So <laughs> sure. Sure, you got to crawl before you can walk. Some baby steps into uh, the big show. The uh, super yeah. I was I was definitely opposed to superflex for a little while there, uh, but yeah. now it's now it's where I want to live. Anything that makes more people relevant, I'm interested in. But IDP is coming. Uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> not yet. Sh don't never say never. From, but yeah, but not true. right now. <laughs> it's true. I've shot away from IDP and salary caps so far. Yeah. Uh, so. All right, well, let's get into it here. We had at the 1-1, no surprise, Bijan, and then the 1-2, Gibbs, uh, and then the 1-3, JSN. So, you know, that seems to be pretty standard. Do you have a, a preference at the 2 or the 3? No, ABC, 1-2-3. I, I think it went the way that I would. I mean, obviously, if, I, if I'm not competing, Competing, which I'm num the you know the two spot maybe I'd lean a little bit at JSN depending on what I've got and you know the direction strategy wise if I'm if we're just talking about team building, but I mean I'm not going to hate on hitting taking Gibbs. So he's got draft capital, he's got talent. I mean, sure, <laughs> you know, and JSN I think is uh, also um, you know he's he's he, I think he's in a good. Uh, some people don't think his landing spot's great. I think it's a pretty decent one, especially with Lockett on the way out. So he may start a little slower um, and maybe not have the ceiling that this year, but you know, this is dynasty. So sure. in the future, I think he's uh, it's, it's, uh, it's going to blast off. He's going to be, be just fine. Yeah. I mean, it's, I, I just, I, as much as I dislike the Seahawks, uh, mostly Pete Carroll, um, mm -hmm. Go Hawks. Know, yeah. <laughs> Go Hawks. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I, I do kind of trust them organizationally to, to make right decisions and, and kind of change to what they've, they've got going on. And I just can't see why you're drafting a slot only receiver at, in the first round. Um, and then going to stay in, in your more 12 personnel kind of settings. And maybe you do right. a little bit of that. Um, but you know, I, I just, like you said, it is dynasty, but I just I think JSN is is probably going to be better than most people even think he will be this year. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think we we could temper expectations just because of you know there are two other good, really good receivers there, right? Um, but it's not going to be long before he has uh, some great games, and they're they're, they're going to figure out how to use him um, and build packages around him to start with until he fully is just you know maybe even the main guy there. Like, I mean, Could be, we all, yeah. we all like DK, you know, a good bit from the physical specimen, but I mean, you know, that could be, you know, the same division has, has their Cooper cup, uh, in that, in that mindset. I think, uh, Shane Waldron, as a, that's the OC, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, he's a McVay guy, isn't he? Yep. He came from the tree, the tree so, of life, you know? you know, and I think the good, the good players, the good, uh, GMs, the good uh, coaching staffs are adapt to the personnel that they have um, and the personnel mm -hmm. that that they just drafted and spent a lot of capital on is JSN. And, you know, so I think, 
you know, maybe poor Will Disley gets the shaft a little bit, uh, mm -hmm. you know, in certain situations. But, I, you know, I'm, I'm not as down on JSN. I mean, you know, yeah, it might it might be a little slow, but he's going to be a monster. I just, yeah. I, you know, so not that it, he was necessarily pushed down any further, but it does seem like some people were a little disappointed. And I, I don't I don't think there's any reason to be. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I think the Seahawks strategy has has changed over the last couple of years. Um, you know, they've they've always been a strong, strong team, strong conference, but they're drafting best player available now, not uh, uh, available, but also available to like uh, uh, difference with their board. And and um, they had a choice of of a lot of receivers. They brought him in for a reason, and. I think he can eat, man. I mean, Gino is—he's uh, proven that he can push the ball downfield. He can open up, up, uh, you know, open it up, and that opens the slot wide, you know, wide open. You know, he's—he's he's pushing it down to DK. He's moving that ball around, and then all of a sudden, G, uh, and JSN is just—he's a tactician, right? He, and he's going right. to learn from Lockett, who is, you know, is super underrated as as a route runner and a receiver in general, and DK, who's been maturing and 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 growing his own football legacy if you will and so um he's, he's just in a good spot i think to to really bloom and and gain knowledge but also just show what he has so yeah I like it yeah i agree all right let's keep it moving here uh we had quentin johnston at the one four and then uh, i believe that was your pick on the next one zay flowers mm -hmm. uh what's your what's your thoughts on quentin johnston going before addison or flowers uh here it was an auto pick for me of her flowers. I, I have him above Johnson um, Johnston. Sorry, I got to put the T in. Uh, <laughs> he's uh, I, I really like the concept of, of, you know, he was fading pre NFL draft, right? You could kind of a lot of the mocks kind of felt like he was falling down the first round. Yeah, Johnston was. Yeah, sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he was kind of fading down, but his landing spot's pretty decent. I mean, he's in a, the, I mean, you have, <laughs> you have Herbert throwing to you. So it's you, right. There, you could do worse. Right. Sure. Um, so I, I don't mind him. I don't mind the stab at one four. Um, I, you know, um, if you're a fan of, of the team, of course, you know, obviously you're going to go that route, but, but I think there's, I think there's a lot of potential there. I just think that Addison and Flowers for me would be above them, but I'm, I'm not going to hate on it. So I, I would tend to agree. It, it would, you know, I, I'm a big Zay guy. So I think, I think, I think I'd take mm -hmm. Zay over both of those guys potentially. Yes. Uh, Addison obviously got the best of the landing spots. And I think he, it's, it's great for him, what he is, uh, the pairing that he got. Mm -hmm. it, but is, and we can talk a little more about that in a minute. Um, but is, is Johnston the, the biggest ceiling play? Is that maybe why you would, wouldn't would shy away from necessarily saying you wouldn't be upset taking him 1-4? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think, you know, if you look at that team, that offense, the way it's constructed, there's going to be changes, right? And right. he's a rookie. So he, he's got the talent. He's, he, he's there. Mike Williams is... Um, you know, he, he should play a good solid five or six games this year. You know, now, hopefully, knock on wood, <laughs> hopefully he plays a lot more than that. But, um, you know, Keenan Allen is, uh, you know, he's 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 talking about a tactician on routes, man. I mean, you know, he, right. he's the man, but he's also he's also getting older. He's a lot younger than me, which is sad to say, but he's he's also getting older. And so <laughs> so eventually, you know, and, and then Eckler, you know, there was discussion all off season, what what's going on with that? And he's huge in the passing game. Right. And so sure. um, so I, I think that just just from the team, um, you bring in over um, is it Kellen Moore, uh, mm -hmm. offensive coordinator yep. from from Dallas. You're bringing him in. You know, you, you kind of saw what he did in Dallas. You know, I, I, I like I like that. And so, yeah, the upside at one four for, for what can be is, is there. And um, I, I think if we're doing it off strictly off player evaluation, you know, it's definitely the other two for me, if we're doing it off potential upside of the actual environment that he's in, I could, I can make a strong argument for the chargers. Yeah. All right. So at one five, you mentioned that you, or we mentioned that you took Zay here, you were on the clock. So J Zay over, over Addison, for you. me, yeah, for me, I, I just um, I believe in Lar Lamar. Um, I you know I know that's hard to say. Last season was kind of beat up. You know the the last couple seasons have been been challenging. But um, 
I, I think with the new offensive coordinator, you know, when we talk about the environment, when we talk about what these players are coming into, I think what we think of the Baltimore Ravens and what they're going to be is two different things. And, and then when you add in the player evaluation of Flowers on top of that, right, where I think that he's, in my opinion, was a better prospect, um, I, I, I just think the sky's the limit for him. Plus, there's, you know, there's no, you know, in, in Johnston's um, world, Keenan Allen's there, you know, Mike Williams is there. In Baltimore, you've got crickets. <laughs> you know, right. you've got you don't you don't really have a, an alpha or or even a beta for that matter. Like right. it, it's wide Wait. open. So he hit his potential just from opportunity is high. And then when you add in the new offense, yes. and um, Lamar wanting to prove that he's worth that money, you know, I I, I love it. Yeah, no, I I, I agree. I think that's. You know, kind of like you're, where we were talking with JSN a minute ago. Like, I feel like everybody thinks it's a bad landing spot when it's mm-hmm. like it's a. I feel like you're you're really just pigeonholing it to what it was, and we all should know that you know the Roman offense comes in. It's good. It was good for Lamar there for a little while, but we've seen it kind of you know sputter out and and get a little stale. So, you mm-hmm. know, Todd Munkin going from the NFL back to back to college, being at Georgia. You know, that was you know one of the better college programs we've seen in a while um, yeah. and then now going back to Baltimore um, and putting Lamar in a different offense and you know Zay being so so damn useful in just about every aspect of of the receiver position um, I think is huge for him and like you said Odell is is 30 30 31 coming off of yeah. a ACL and then you know prior to that really off another ACL um, mm-hmm. had a had a great stint there with the Rams for you know up to the Super Bowl Uh, you know we don't know exactly what you're getting there he'll probably be pretty good but he's he's probably not long for the Ravens and and Bateman we all I think we all like Bateman but we just haven't we haven't gotten to see Bateman it's 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 Andrews that's really your main target competition currently and yeah I guess I should I should preface when I said not an alpha. I meant in the wide receiving room. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. Definitely, Ann Andrews is the alpha there when it comes right. to pass catching. So right. So I, I, I'm I'm very intrigued. I would love Zay beforehand. You know, should throw that out there. And i I don't hate the landing spot because I think he's the he's the kind of guy. And he's gonna see. He's you know we talk about it all the time. I know some people don't want to hear it in their evaluations, but he's a worker, man. He wants to be good. Mm-hmm. He's he's the guy that that brings the energy to the room, and he he's gonna that's gonna be, be a factor for that offense, and he's gonna command greatness and and work hard to achieve it. Uh, and those yeah. those are the kind of guys that I want. And I'm not saying that JSN and Quentin Johnston and Addison don't have that, but it's right. it seems to be on the forefront of what everybody talks about with Zay. Yeah, uh-huh. his personality type is definitely right. definitely there to 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 make you feel like all right, like let's get on this bus, let's go. I'm I'm ready, you know. Right. So the next pick then at one six is our first tight end. We are in tight end premium. This one quarterback is Dalton Kincaid. No surprise there. We can spend a bunch of time on this, but I don't think we really need to. We'll we'll no. have you know said and talked about all every which way of the tight end here. I don't necessarily disagree with it, and I'm not upset about it. I'm not not going to be the guy who is saying that you can't draft a first round tight end. I don't believe that trends are made to be broken over the last little bit of trend. It didn't work out, uh, but it, it certainly can work out for Kincaid in that yeah. offense. It's fun. I would take Addison before I took Kincaid here. Same. Um, yeah, but I'm not, I'm, you know, we're, we're sort of splitting hairs there a little bit, but after yeah. that, I'd be fine with taking Kincaid at any point mm-hmm. uh, really. Uh, so, and then, you know, the last point with Kincaid is I, I think, I think the volume will be there to make him, relevant and tight end more relevant and just a 1.5 premium because that's you know what's going to boost the value the most in 1.5 premium is for the tight end position it is the volume and i think you know maybe mm-hmm. obviously rookie year maybe you don't quite see what exactly what you want to see but i think you could be trending in the right direction for that and then yeah. you know, a point that i've been making is that the tight end the elite tight end position especially in premium is a lot more is a lot more like the why or the uh quarterback position and trading for is you at least need the promise of something young that could be elite to mm-hmm. get up to a stable elite guy like a Mark Andrews. Um, yeah. He's definitely make- a bridge for a tier. Yeah. yeah right. I see what you're saying. Yeah. He's, he's got the, he's got all the, all the tangibles to help you get to um, your, 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 your proven elites with the upside of possibly being there himself. I mean, I, I think he's definitely what I would consider the, the, 
the snowball down the mountain uh, player this year and in, in any format, or w- regardless if we're in super flex, you know, sure. regular. Uh, I think that's a good, a good analogy. Yeah. He he's um, the further we get away from Buffalo drafting him, the, the more momentum and the bigger he's getting, you know, there's a point where I think value wise, I'm going to be probably, you know, I have some drafts later on in August and, and July, which I probably won't, <laughs> I won't even be able to touch him because, yeah. you know, like, uh, I mean, I, you know, I joke, but I mean, one quarterback's a little bit different. We're looking at this board and, and, you know, I'm kind of like, Ooh, okay. But, but as, as you get further down, it's like, I, I, it's hard to argue to take him where he's at. Um, if he goes higher than that, and 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 like you said, I, I think I'd have Addison above him. But if he starts popping up into those um, those quarterbacks and and those wide receivers, if we're talking super flex, or in this case, just those wide receivers, I, it's it's it it's too much for me. But yeah. But again, going back to the whole, what are you playing for? Are you playing for ceiling? Are you playing for you know future value? I, I completely understand the, the 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 argument there. So yeah, agreed. Now, if you get into two point. And you want to start sliding him up above two point per reception for tight mm-hmm. ends, premium wise. If you wanted to start, I'm definitely more comfortable than sliding him up against, you know, yeah. in front of Zay or Quentin Johnston or Addison. Maybe I mm-hmm. still take JSN, um, but definitely a lot higher in the conversation. So uh, next pick is one seven Kendra Miller. You know that that would be that would be fine with me. Yeah. Uh, it's it's I like it there. And if you said, hey, I'm going to take Kendra over Dalton Kincaid. Uh, also wouldn't be offended. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's going to have the chance with Kamara's, I think at some point pending suspension mm-hmm. for right. however many games that's going to be. And then even when Kamara comes back, I mean, it, it, you kind of see the writing on the wall as to where they're the direction that they're going. And so I, I think he's a solid pick um, from a early start off hot potential to even a long-term dynasty asset. So, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, he, he's firmly locked into my tier three RB group and, and the leader in that where it was Charbonnet before kind of by himself. I think mm-hmm. Kendra Miller. Oh, I don't know if Kendra is necessarily by himself in that tier, but I really like the player. I like the all around ability of of catching ability. Size is there to be a workhorse. Right. Opportunity can and should arise. Like I don't see Jamal Williams as a threat in any yeah. really re, any real capacity. Now he can be a bummer sometimes mm-hmm. but i think kendra yeah. has the ability to carve out that role and i liked him a whole lot leading up to the draft so for him to get the capital and get a landing spot i don't hate is uh is nice there so so kendra fine there and then addison at one eight like we said i think you and i are both fine with him or flowers and then ab- above kincaid uh, addison mm-hmm. i think getting you know probably the best quickest landing spot of of you know he could be the top scoring rookie wide receiver and would we be shocked you know no yeah probably probably not probably so, not yep so do you does that in that case you know would you would you be more interested in addison if you if you because the value could turn around to be the quickest turnaround to be a bridge to jumping off to something else it, as far as the wide receivers go right as far as maybe moving him ahead of zay or quentin johnston or does that not factor into your decision because you know we've been doing this industry mock and it's been interesting yeah. to see everybody's different perspective of of mm-hmm. how peeling it back of how they view the rookies and the drafts and mm-hmm. is everything just a bridge to something else or is it just hey i'm taking addison because i think he's going to be a good player on all my team for four or five years yeah i think he has the solid um upside to be a trade candidate if you're into trading right i think it's a really about roster construction and and um if if you're taking him i think you're feeling like his ceiling's capped but he's going to be a solid and there's nothing wrong with a solid number two you know uh, mm-hmm. wide receiver two in your lineup um i think you can sell the story where he can he can climb into that high in wide receiver two um spot for for me i um I think I'd still have flowers over him just because I feel like um, I, I, I would like the see I like the ceiling more on flowers than I do on Addison. And that's just the way I build my teams personally. Um, I, I feel like Addison has uh, he's kind of vanilla, uh, vanilla ice cream to me. You know, he's kind of plain in, in the sense of uh, don't get me wrong. He's a great talent. He's a great player. I'm not saying that. But what, what I am saying is I don't I don't see him, you know, all of a sudden sneaking out and 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 being this uh, alpha 
not Justin Jefferson's on there, but you know, alpha in the sense of like, just, just dominating the field for, for touches and, and uh, just, just catching everyone's eye. Um, uh, so, so for me, like, I, I think I would actually probably take Kincaid over him at one eight um, in, in that spot. Um, but, but if you're, if you're in one eight, you're on the precipice of trying to get into that championship role. And so again, it dependent upon how your, your roster is constructed and you're looking to, if you're looking to move into um, a, a, a higher tier wide receiver, I think Addison, like you said, has a really great floor and can start off hot and stay hot. And, and I think you could get great value to, to flip them or just keep them in your lineup and have them as your flex play. Or, or you know, if I have them as my wide receiver three, cause I'm, I'm, I'm picking one eight and I, you know, I have a decent, decent squad. I just need mm-hmm. some more depth. And, you know, maybe I got a couple of injuries last year. Like I, I like that. I, I don't, I don't mind that at all. I'm, I'm, I, I love consistency. Um, but um, I think that uh, I think as far as ceiling goes, I, I, I do think there's a cap on there. And, and like you said, I, I think he, he could be the number one wide receiver rookie in points, but it's going to be from consistency. It's not going to be from huge splash games. Right. Yeah, I, I I understand what you're saying, and I I, I mostly agree. Um, and I, I I think Zay has more of the ability of busting out to be somebody more likely viewed in the. I'm not saying he's going to be Justin Jefferson, but in that category of mm-hmm. Waddle, Garrett Wills, like where those guys just achieved themselves into that bona fide, you know, dog that everybody yeah. uh, mm-hmm. that everybody wants. And you know, Addison, you know, Thielen and and Jefferson, you know put up great numbers together sure. um, yeah so it, it's there um you know now hawkinson's in there so we'll see how that all middles out but i think i think addison's you know a good pick but i like most everything you said there now to round out this first round we had mayor on the next pick charbonnet at 10 a chain at 11 and then i took mims at 12 i don't again don't really we're in one quarterback tight end premium so you know with mayor being that high up in the first round that's fine with me really i'd be okay with taking a chain but mayor's fine there any thoughts on the back half of this round yeah mayor's out of the first round for me in a in a one qb league um tight end premium even um i i i understand the pick and i and i i understand the argument but just for for me personally i i think the other players that we're going to talk about and, and even some in the beginning of the second round have have more potential for me if I'm if I'm picking in the the back quarter of, of the of the first round. Um, if if I'm thinking mayor, I think I'm trading. You know, I'm going to try to trade out of that pick and probably catch him a little bit later. Um, there, there's a lot of moves that you can do at that point if you're looking if you're tied in late and you're looking to to add a tight end um, in in a premium in a premium league. So um, I, I think I'd have all those players above him, e- even Charbonnet, even with the landing spot in Seattle and, uh, you know, the question marks around that. Like, I, I, I still think um, for me, Mayer is probably the beginning of the second is, is kind of where I would look at for him personally. Yeah. Yeah. No, I was I was really hoping I could get Mayer at the at the 12 spot there. Sure. Um, yeah. And, you know, once I'm obviously we just pick spots and we, we drafted, there's no teams associated with it, but yeah. you know, me being a, a, a nine, 10, 11, 12 team, I certainly like myself getting a, another shot at a tight end. And I think mayor for me, I'm, I'm definitely a bit more of a tight end uh, lover uh, than, mm-hmm. than you and, and most, yeah. which I'm fine with taking mayor. He he's, you know, he's not as fun and flashy as Kincaid is, but he's been rock solid throughout his entire college career i think the landing Mm -hmm. spot was pretty good for him the capital was still fine he's maybe not going to be you know quite the not going to be the slot kind of guy but he's he's he can be you know an inline guy be a good blocker and and pick up those pivotal situations thirds touchdowns big downs uh he can move the chains for you um just not quite as sexy and the you know the athletic score you know, heard heard him in a lot of people's minds there, but I'm I'm still fine with Mayer. Mm. What are your What were your Let's touch on Charbonnet a little bit because you're a you're you're a Hawks guy. Is is what's your read on that? Um, 
You know, I think Charbonnet is, um, if we're talking just strictly draft, I mean, I, I think um, A-Chain is above him uh, for me. But but if if we're just going to talk about what his season outlook looks like, I mean, you looked at Rashad, Rashad Penny, who was hurt last year when and, mm-hmm. and then Kenny Three Sticks had to come in and kind of play a, a more pivotal role. But you could tell that they weren't, they weren't ready to just hand it over to, you know, um, and, and I don't think they're ready to let Kenny be the, the every down back. I, I think they're, they're playing to win. They're not, they're, unfortunately they're not playing for my fantasy league. I'm not sure why it's kind of, kind of a little frustrating, but, uh, but uh, they're, they're right. not playing for that. And so, um, so is when we're, but we are a fantasy st- st- um, shop, right? So let's talk about his fantasy value. I think his fantasy value is it's still pretty decent. I mean, I think that um, he's definitely a handcuff, handcuff in the sense of the the uh, the the Ken um, owner. But I, I also do think he still has quite a bit of value. I, I was looking at touches, and I think it was like fifteen to sixteen was like the average touch rate for for. Um, Ken Kenny. Walker last year, and um, I don't think that they're going to go much higher than that. I mean, I know everybody wants them to, but if you look at that offense, they don't have to. And there's an extra game. You know, we, we don't talk about it anymore, but there's <laughs> it's still a new transition of that extra NFL game, and it, and it doesn't seem like much, but it's it it wear and tear on the team and, and having that depth. I, I think that he's going to get plenty of play to score some points, and it'll be interesting to see what the goal line looks like because that could definitely – you know, swing it, swing it in his favor as well. Right. Um, and, uh, you know, obviously he's not in this draft, but on, on the, on the flip side of, you know, it did, did tap down a little bit, um, Kenny's value, but, it, but it, it, I don't think it's landslide it like some people have, have thought right. of because, because if you actually look at his usage and what they were trying to do with him, um, I think it gives him, I think it gives him as in Kenny more opportunity and positive, positions than it did it with DJ Dallas and some of the other, sorry, Matt, uh, some of the other <laughs> RBs that w- that were there that, you know, like you, you saw one of them come in, you could kind of change your, your run defense up a little bit. Right. And, and maybe cheat towards, towards a pass and, and that if you're playing defensive schemes with Charbonnet, you can't do that. I mean, he's, he's a solid prospect. He's a solid runner. And, yeah. and um, I, I think that, uh, He's going to add value not only to him to the team, but I do think he's going to add some value to uh, the R- the RB room in general there. So, yeah, they they clearly needed a guy. We just didn't mm-hmm. suspect that 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 it would be yeah, that guy be, yeah. that high. Um, but the Seahawks are you know we talk about it with there are some organizations that seem to play a little bit more into the hand of what's currently in vogue. And the Seahawks certainly aren't one of those. They don't give a mm-hmm. fuck as much as I trust them to adapt. They're always going to have a little bit of that. Hey, we're not scared to just play ball control, run the shit out of the football. And now mm-hmm. we have two guys that can do it. Cause we've put ourselves in a position where, you know, as much as we maybe wanted to do it, like you're kind of alluding to, we haven't been able to with the, the eliteness that maybe we want to. And now we've hopefully eliminated that problem. Uh, whether it's one guy or the other guy injured because it is a long season and running back's a tough position. Yeah. You know, I was I was never worried about Kenny Walker catching the ball, but it definitely could hinder a little bit of the the pass catching uh, prowess that I, or at least opportunities that Kenny was could be afforded. I think Charbonnet has got really natural, easy hands. Um for the mm-hmm. Seahawks, so that then gives them one more just wrinkle of the hey, we're, we we can kind of do both things with both guys. You don't have to say hey, it's a passing down we're putting in this guy necessarily. Yeah. Um, and you you, know. you refer to it when we were talking about um, JSN is is I, I think the tight end room is really what takes the hit in Seattle. You know, mm-hmm. I, I think the personnel groupings and the way that they're going to play is going to play towards the wide receivers and running backs and and um, in the past, especially when Russ was there. Um, and, that, and this isn't a height joke, but just just the way to play the middle of the field and and to get get him in rhythm, there was a lot of tight end down the seam plays and a lot of pieces like that. Gino's a little bit different quarterback, and so I think they can do some things differently scheme wise, and, and sure. I think that's why you see the team being built the way it is. Is it's just it's 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 a different strategy, but it's also just a different quarterback back there, and and I think that's. Uh, 
that's what they want to how they want to play it so yeah you, they can play a lot more on scan on schedule predictable football whereas with russell how when it was great it's great but we saw how it could be mm-hmm. not fun when it's not winning and working yeah uh, in denver um and yeah. certain times in seattle where i think mm-hmm. they were probably frustrated by hey w- we want to be a little more on time on schedule running this offense and russell kind of takes a little bit of that out of there but when the magic's not working i'm sure you know Pete could get up uh, you know into a decent amount of packs of gum through a game yeah yeah, uh, with, yeah. with russell not you know operating exactly how he wants him to yeah, it'd so. be un- interesting to find out what his gum budget is now you know like. <laughs> yeah <laughs> for sure uh so a chain I-, I agree with you i would take a chain over charbonnet but i'm not fading charbonnet super super duper hard he's out no. of the first round i think for the most part for me one quarterback if you wanted to go 112 ish that would be mm-hmm. fine. Um, I took I took Mims there. Wasn't crazy about it, uh, but um, you know, didn't really exactly. It was the first time I'd been in a one quarterback uh, situation there. Um, yeah. You know, I I could make a case for Laporta there as much as I could. If, if I like Mayer there, I think I like Laporta there. Yeah. So I I could have been fine with that. And then also, you know, we're in a one quarterback, so quarterbacks are getting devalued here. Let's say I'm the champ. Uh, I'm I'm one twelve. I just won. Uh, mm-hmm. let's say I won, but you know, my quarterback room, well, who, 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 let's say I won with Daniel Jones last year, right. um, as my quarterback. Uh, now if I have Mahomes or Josh Allen, I'm, I, maybe I'm not making this pick, but at one twelve, is there room to have a discussion for a championship like roster to take Anthony Richardson here? Yeah, I mean, I don't see why not. I mean, the same concept as you were talking about with Addison and Kincaid to tear up. I mean, in, it, it could be opposite in the sense of like you're tearing down. But it, when quarterbacks don't have a lot of value in a single quarterback league, but they do have a lot of value in a single quarterback league to the people that are in there, right? <laughs> Especially yeah. if, if the teams are hoarding them and, and or if you've got large bench spots. I mean, you know, you got to play your league a little bit and, and understand your your um, your league mates. But but I think there's a there's an argument to be made that Richardson um, could easily, you know, have the floor that everybody's, you know, after and he's a top five quarterback. And then at that point, I mean, what are you trading Patrick Mahomes for in a one quarterback league? What are you trading Lamar Jackson in a one quarterback league? You know, like now. I know he's not <laughs> that caliber yet. He's not in that tier sure, yet. But sure. if we're talking just pure fantasy points, right, and we're taking names out of it, and we're just looking at stats, and we're getting on our on our uh, our 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 goggles of uh, of analytics, right? Like, mm-hmm. I mean, there's there's not much more of a ceiling and and a floor really that you're going to ask for from that position, and he could lead you to that um, from a point. So for our championship, like you said, even if I had. Um, one of those um, top tier quarterbacks, I still think I'm taking him because okay. I have two and he's a trading ship for me to get a really big piece because he's a very sought after quarterback, at the, especially at this time of year. And, and right. once, you know, he's cleaning up freaking litter, you know, like he's, <laughs> he's sure. you know, he's 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 proven that he's trying to be the leader of the team. He's he's showing he's trying to prove it by example. You know, um, I know. um we, you had uh, Harmon on, uh, or uh, not Harmon, um, Waldman, uh, Waldman on, and you know he was just talking about his maturity and how he, you know, he doesn't make mistakes twice, and how he's just a learner and he's and he's working hard on all those kind of things, and like, I mean, that story, uh, along with just the thought of what he can be, I think you could really pivot off of him if you're a champion. Um, uh, and and you don't need them and and get a, a you know an amazing piece especially in the first third of the year when people start panicking and and start to sell the trade because I'm owing right. two and I, you know I'm I'm never going to win anything you know and so so yeah there's there's definitely an argument there right or or if you're you know in that league and you have a pretty good roster but the, also the guy who has hurts and uh Lamar or Josh Allen also have a really good roster but you're losing that quarterback battle every week you know that could yeah. be another position you know there, there is some potential there um mm-hmm. so it's just not you know just a throwaway necessarily but I like that all right let's we're gonna run through some chunks here in the second round so two two is Mingo two three is Downs two four is Rice two five is Spears and two six is Laporta is there any of those that you have a problem with or that you would move down or people that you would move up? Cause I think, 
I like downs, but I think I would, I might bump him down a little bit. Um, I've been coming around to the idea of Mingo. I mm-hmm. like Spears a lot and I like, I like the landing spot for Rice. And like I said, Laporta, I think, you know, maybe I even missed with not taking him at 212 if I was down to take uh, Mayer, you know, how much different. They're very different players, but the theory, how much different is it? Right. Uh, so what are your thoughts? Yeah, I think downs uh, going down <laughs> is uh, going down further in this draft. Would I? That would probably be my play. Or And if I was to pick one, if you're saying, you know, you got to pick one that um, shouldn't, you know, which one it's not like the others. Yeah. Um, uh, Downs is definitely the 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 one for me in in that group. I think Mingo starting with uh you know a young quarterback, um the building the the rapport that could be there. Rice just the, you know it, we talk about the Casey lamps you know like that mm-hmm. you know it's a here he is again you know here's another one like you know you <laughs> sure you, you can you can get super excited about it I I um and and I and and, and in, in addition he's a, he's a decent player and then Spears you know he's he's probably not going to have a lot of value in the very beginning. So getting them in the middle of the second round is good. If you have a taxi squad, it's even better with Henry there. But, um, but yeah, I mean, you can kind of, you, they have a proven track record of putting somebody in the, in the, you know, marinating somebody in the pot behind, behind the running back and, mm-hmm. and bringing somebody out and, and he could definitely be that. And then, yeah, I think Laporta is, um, that's the reason why I'm not so high on mayor. Cause I don't really see much of a difference there. You know, yeah. like I could trade back from, from that section, drop into the early second round, you know, depending on your, on your players and what, what's going on and probably pick up that, that tight end there. Um, Laporta or mayor, whoever falls, you know, uh, t- tomato potato for me at that point. <laughs> so. All right. Yeah. I, I, I tend to agree. All right. So let's keep it moving here. Tank Bigsby goes next. I'm mostly fine with that. And then, then comes the two other quarterbacks. So, mm-hmm. is, do you think that's a good spot for them? Would you move them up at all? What What are your thoughts on on kind of the next couple of quarterbacks here in a one quarterback? Yeah, I mean, I don't mind it. You know, you're the same concept that we talked about with um, Richardson for a champion team or one that's close to it. You know, maybe maybe that's what you need. And and um, I think rookie quarterbacks, no matter what the format is, they they tend to have value. Um, they tend to hold value for at least the first quarter of the year. And, and, you know, that can change, that can go up drastically, that can go down drastically, but in, you know, but until the football has been snapped a few times in the, in, in the real point scoring season, I, I still think they hold their value. So, so I don't mind it. I, I think I would be probably more inclined to take a running back in those positions. Um, you know, it looks like yeah. Hyatt went after them. Um, you know, I, I, I think that I, I, lean towards Reed or Hyatt or, you know, a, a spot like that, just, just, just based off of, um, um, you know, the, the, the potential of those players. But again, like, uh, you know, if you have a taxi, if you have a taxi squad or if you have a, a larger roster spot, I don't mind it. If this is a short squad, short bench, right. And, a, and mm-hmm. you have no taxi squad, then I'm probably not taking a quarterback there for sure. Right. You know? mm-hmm. Um, but, but if, if this is a real, I shouldn't say real, but if this is a, a dynasty league, that big D's in, uh, which is going to be large rosters and taxi squads, like, right. yeah, I, I have no Same. problem taking them there. So, yeah. All right. So I, I tend to agree. I, I would I'm OK with if you wanted to throw Roshan and Tillman and Reed and Hyatt in front of them and then say Stroud and Young or 211, 212, 31. Fine with that, too. Um, makes a kind of about where I would see those guys going. Uh, but Reed is the next pick at 210, Hyatt at 211, Roshan at 212. I think that's that that's really good. I, I was at 212. I think that was good value on Roshan there. Yeah. Um, yeah, I agree. You know, I, I don't know if I'm as excited as ever uh, as some of these Roshan people out there. But I mean, w- once he gets past, you know, the two, six, two, seven range, really, even in Superflex, um, I start to be like, all right. Yeah, now I'm, I'm he's palatable uh, for me. I know Matt is is a is a Roshan at the at the turn uh, to 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 one area. But um I, I do think from what I saw of his limited, court, you know, transferring from quarterback to running back and having limited exposure at that position was really good. And he and mm. he kind of gets in that mold again of, of being a worker, a good guy, uh, you know, down to do whatever. Um, so the Bears, 
you know, that regime that's in there right now didn't necessarily draft Herbert either. Foreman, I believe, is only on a one year deal. I think that's going to yeah. be a, a pretty good backfield in general. Like just mm-hmm. they, they're all I think they're all pretty good players. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I think Roshan's there to to be the guy for the long haul. Um, right. So, you know, it may be somebody that you could even buy into after a few weeks if, you know, if Herbert or Foreman kind of take the reins of being, you know, it's going to be a lot for Roshan to come in and only had played two or three years of college running back, you know, right. It's, it's not like he'd spent his whole life. I mean, he has been a quarterback, so there's a whole lot more to process there and, and, and to manage. Uh, but I do think that there, it could be overwhelming there for a few weeks for Roshan or at least the first half of the, I mean, shit season rookie. Sometimes they talk about it, rookie wall or just really not getting it and not really understanding what to do. So, you know, something that I don't think a lot of people are talking about is that it could take a minute for Roshan to acclimate. I think he has all the skills to do so, mm-hmm. um, but could be something that there could be a buyback in opportunity with him. Um, once we get to the end of the, the second, definitely down with Reed, definitely down with Hyatt. Hyatt's a, you know, nice splash player. I would rather have Tillman than Hyatt still, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, at, at that point, two, two, 11, three, one, if, if Hyatt or Tillman's hanging around, uh, I would take Tillman still, uh, but I don't mind taking either one. Hyatt's, you know, it's kind of wide open on the Giants there. Uh, he could be a splashy play kind of guy right off the rip. We like day ball. Um, general thoughts on Hyatt versus Tillman? Yeah, I mean, I can see what you're saying with Tillman. I I, I don't. Um, and then Hyatt, the way that he, you know, the, what he is as a receiver running, you know, with the speed and, and getting downfield. And then you have Daniel Jones throwing on a ball. It's kind of like, eh. Um, but, I, but I also see opportunity there. Um, it, for me, they're honestly they're they're really a coin flip at that at that point. I, I don't mm-hmm. I don't have strong you know strong opinion one way or the other for for either one of them. Um, in, in the sense, I, I like them. I, I like the I like the play. I like the the challenge. But if somebody went Tillman, somebody went Hyatt, it, it you know fifty fifty for me either either yeah. way. Okay, all right. So three two uh, Chase Brown, uh, three three Zach Evans, three four Musgraves, three five Boutte. Three six craft, uh, three seven shoemaker or scood maker. I'm not really sure which way that goes. Yeah. Um, Abanacanda three eight, Tank Dell three nine, McBride three ten, Vaughn three eleven, and Levis at three twelve uh, from me. So, mm-hmm. uh, what are just what are your some of your like? Give me give me a favorite pick or two there, and then maybe something that you didn't didn't love or was a little too well. High. Not because you're the only one on the screen, and the other <laughs> people are. So, but but I mean that Levis pick at three twelve is, is to me is just a screaming deal. I mean I know he wasn't a first round quarterback, but he was super high second round quarterback with a team that wanted him there was rumors that they were trying to trade up to get him and even if they weren't trying to trade up to get him with that fifth year option like i mean he's he's worth the shot just from his upside you know we talk about richardson and what what he could do but um i i really like the the 312 especially with you taking mims and instead so if this was a if we were you know in a money league here and and this is how your draft rolled out i've you know for for you as an for me being in your league i'd be pissed but for you as an <laughs> owner i you know I'd, I'd be super excited about it i i think all the rest of these players and and this is kind of um i think you know especially the three say three seven on um mm-hmm. is is really similar value to what your third round any format kind of turns into right yeah like, so you're, sure. you're really just kind of taking you're taking shots you're, you're you're trying to get your player and you're trying to find i mean when i'm in the in these picks I, I tend to go running back heavy in the third and fourth round just because you typically know what you're going to get you know relatively soon out of the gate uh you know some of the especially like tight ends they can take a while to develop um you know wide receivers you know if you're if you're picking later but there's been some um there's been wide receivers in the past that have gone in the fourth, uh, third and fourth round um, that have have come out of nowhere. Right. Um, I'm trying sure. to think of some off the top of my head, but um, I'll pull it up at some point. But but yeah, but I know that there's there's third and fourth round receivers every year where you're like, why? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm in Ross St. Brown. Uh, sure. Was, yeah, there's was one. A, there, was there we go. I knew there was one in there. So um, <laughs> not, I'm not just talking, talking out my ass. Oh, no, but. there's there's, <laughs> there's definitely, you know, a nice little chunk of those guys. Yeah. But but I think if you look, if you kind of go back and you analyze third and fourth rounds, um, I, I think that you 
you know, and, and, and I know that analyze analytical, the data, the percentage, the statistics are going to be higher on the running backs. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to recognize more names in the running back room, I think, than you will in the wide receiver rooms. If you go back to 2020 and 2021 and kind of look at those drafts and see who was going in the third and fourth rounds. Um, mm -hmm. But again, you know, I, I think a lot of those running backs that go there, you're going to recognize them, but that doesn't mean they're stars where the wide receivers, you're not going to recognize as many, but that typically means that a lot of them are not, maybe not upper echelon, but they're, they're higher in the value as far as, as running backs goes. Um, yeah. At least that's like my, my initial, just like kind of quick research that I've been kind of, kind of going back and looking at some of my money leagues and just seeing, you know, who, who do I recognize and who do I not recognize? You know, where, where's the, where's the Hakeem Butlers of the world? Where, where did they get drafted? How dare you? He, he, he's back, man. He's a wide he's receiver back. now, but he's he back. back. Um, but no, you know, like I, I going back and just kind of looking at it and, and I was, um, I don't, I don't have the note in front of me, but, um, and, and I'll get it for another pod, but there, there's some in there that, um, that I'm just like, okay, I, I recognize this running back. I recognize this running back. He was decent. He gave some value, you know, um, but then, you know, you've got like um, St. Brown, who's everybody knows who he is now. Right. If you, right. And, and you've got a couple others in there that um, that, are, that have added value over time. So. Oh, for sure. So like, like a guy like Chase Brown, Zach Evans, Abana Kanda, even Dwayne McBride. Um, once you get into this third, fourth round, Evan uh, Hall is 410. Spoiler alert. And Eric Gray is 41. Do you start prioritizing handcuffs at any point or is it just you're just taking best opportunity, best value. I think I'd pick a best opportunity, which includes handcuffs, even if I don't have the player, like, you know, if I, you know, if I know like in, um, in Gray's case as, as the Giants, if I'm in the fourth round and I know that he's, he's backing up, um, Barkley and Barkley has been good, but Barkley's who knows he's on a franchise play this year. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, he, he's had some injuries in the past. I mean, there's, there's a story there to tell that I could easily, get some value right away and or flip that player to the Barkley owner at, at some point, you know, all, sure. all it takes is, you know, Barkley coming up and, and not even being out, but just coming up a little, a little lame and having to go out for a little bit. And then all of a sudden that gray, that gray value has, you know, maybe, maybe you bump up a spot. Maybe you can sell them for, if you got them in the fourth, maybe you sell them for a third next year or, you know, you just yeah. incrementally get that value and, and, um, you know, what is it? The ninth wonder of the world compound interest. That's kind of what we're doing here. Right. If right. Can, you know, right. if you're playing with sharks, you're looking just for that little bit of value that you can add, add, add. And then all of a sudden, you know, it's 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 a landslide and you've got a ton of value all over your lineup from those little bit, little, tiny, little tiny bit moves and uh, and and you're in championship mode. So, yeah, uh, I, that's a that's a good summation of, of how to view that. Um so yeah, the the third, you know, obviously I like I like Chase Brown and Zach Evans a good bit if you've been watching, and then I like the I like the craft pick. Um, mm -hmm. I think uh, you know Musgrave going a, a, a pick or two before him, you know, Craft I think could easily end up being the guy who plays a little more this year. He just seems a little more ready. Musgraves is the tantalizing, fun prospect, but Craft may be you know a little more honed in and tightened up in his game, um, and we've seen that before where people draft, uh, you know. Uh, was Charlie Kohler and Isaiah likely uh, obviously Kohler yep. got hurt but you know they there's been times where two tight ends get drafted you know I believe with yep. Andrews and Hurst the same class I, I like the craft pick and then uh, Shoemaker is is somebody who you know, good good capital and and mm -hmm. easy path to potential targets here especially tight end premium so I kind of like all those guys Tank Dell uh, as well uh, so then the fourth round here Eric Gray Washington tight end uh, strange tight end four three uh, Wilson four four Hutchinson four five um, Mallory four six Sean Tucker four seven uh, Latu four eight AT Perry four nine Hull four ten Allen uh, the tight end for the Rams and uh, Puka at four twelve you know like you said after you get past the the kind of second round or at least a good chunk of the second round here it kind of becomes fairly similar to what we've been seeing in tight end premium super flex drafts uh, because that all kind of starts once those quarterbacks go it all starts to balance right. itself kind of back out here um so if you've been watching you know you kind of know who 
who we like. You took Hutchinson. I like Hutchinson a good bit. I like the Sean Tucker. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I, I took uh, Puka there at the end. Uh, so any thoughts on the fourth round there as we wrap up? No, I mean, you know, I like Hutchinson and I at the at the four or five where I was at, I like Puka. And it was between Puka and Hutchinson for me personally. Um, at, at that spot, I went Hutch just because I feel like he, you know, Houston's wide open. Um, so is the Rams for that matter. But um, mm-hmm. with a young quarterback there, you know, I could see somebody's probably going to grow. And um, and with Stroud and, you know, and I could easily see that being being Hutch. And, and that's the reason why I flipped flipped it there. Um, you know, I talked about I normally take running backs in the third and fourth round and in, in mm-hmm. my in my leagues I, I went a little bit different route here with two wide receivers at the end partially because I wanted to see where values came with some of those running backs but sure partially because I, I I think that with Hutch I think that there's um there's a strong possibility that he could lead the lead the room there and and like we talked about just a moment ago there's third and fourth wide receivers you either know them or you don't and and I think that he's a he's a potential of, of knowing him in a couple of years and still being in the league still being relevant and possibly more that so yeah yeah for sure all right well uh good first show big d uh we appreciate you uh we're gonna wrap up here be sure to like subscribe comment below um you know patreon the five dollar holler all that good stuff uh rate review subscribe yada 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 um and and we appreciate you uh and we'll be back uh with more married to the game 